guys, it's Lisette here. And in today's video, I'm finally doing the very highly requested video, how I grew my hair. I honestly think this is the longest that my hair has been in my entire life. So let's talk about it. What did I do? Are there any tips and tricks? A lot of these tips you may know already, you may not know, but this is just what worked for me. Make sure that you click the link in the description to check out all my favorite curly hair products. And so let's get straight into it. If you've been following me for a while, you know the journey that I have been on. It was my dream ever since I went natural to have my hair blonde and I finally achieved it. I was pretty good at maintaining my blonde, but I realized that my hair never really got past shoulder length. My roots would grow in, but then my hair would be here. And I'm just like, if my roots are growing, how is my hair not getting longer? Like things just weren't making sense. And that's when I realized that a lot about hair growth is about retaining length. My hair was growing out my scalp, but it was staying around the same length because my hair was breaking off. My hair damage was really showing towards the end of 2019. And in 2020 with quarantine and everything, that's when I really started to try to really get my hair healthy because I realized like, it's not looking cute. <laughs> it's not, I'm not happy, it's not looking cute, something has to change. So if you're not keeping those ends looking healthy, you will eventually have breakage. So as you can see, obviously I'm not blonde anymore and all of this is my natural hair, grown from my scalp, no color, nothing. Ironically, I feel like what has helped my hair grow the most has been trimming my hair. If your hair is damaged, there's only so much you can do. I wanted to start fresh. And to be honest, I haven't had my hair healthy and natural and curly since I was like 11 years old. I completely stopped coloring my hair. I get a professional trim twice a year, but in between I'm doing my own at home trim. I style my hair and I apply a lot of gel. Like I apply a lot of product so I can really clump my curls and really get my hair super defined so I can see how the curls naturally want to clump together. I dry my hair and I dry it in a more elongated state. Not worried about volume, not worrying about anything else, but just trying to get the curls to really be defined. And then I go curl by curl and any ends that look weird or super thin or just they're looking see-through, I'll take some scissors and I just snip it. I've realized the power of cutting your hair. Don't be afraid of the scissors. Go at your own pace. You don't have to do like a big chop or anything. I just snipped off, I would say, a half an inch every two months. I realized that I had to cut off the damage to be able to move forward. Listen to your hair. Everybody's always trying to tell you like what to do and don't use this and use this and don't use a cream and use a cream and use an oil, don't use an oil. If it's not following a rule or whatever, I do what works for me. It's all about learning your hair, learning your textures, your hair porosity, if you're protein sensitive. So I highly suggest that you start to learn and understand your hair and your scalp. When I shampoo, I used to just shampoo like the scalp and then it's like, okay, I'm done. Now I shampoo twice. So the first time I just target my scalp and the second time I bring the shampoo all the way down, cleansing all of my hair. I want the strands to be clean. I want everything to be clean and fresh so that when I'm doing my curly hair routine, I have a completely clean slate. And I wash my hair once a week, every five to seven days. It really depends on the shampoo as well. If it's a really clarifying shampoo, then I would only do it once. But if it's more of like a gentle shampoo, I'll definitely do it twice. Every time I shampoo, I always make sure that I deep condition every single time. And the thing is, like I'm a lazy natural hair girly. I like to use my hair mask in the shower after I shampoo and just use that in replace of conditioner. Depending on how my hair's feeling is what type of mask that I'll use. So I deep condition every single week, every single time I shampoo, I just leave it in my hair, tie my hair up. So it's like in my hair for like a good 10, 15 minutes. And honestly, I feel like it gets the job done, so. And of course, I always use a microfiber towel to dry my hair. Once a week before I wash my hair, I'll also do a scalp massage with some oil, just really massaging and bringing that blood flow to my scalp. And I feel like that's helped a lot too. I've also decided for the meantime to completely cut out heat. I'm not a curly hair girl that's gonna be like, don't ever straighten your hair. If you wanna straighten your hair, straighten your hair. Just know, just know that every time you straighten your hair, it is a gamble. I've straightened my hair in the past and my hair has been completely fine. But this last time, I could see that my hair wasn't the same. It didn't feel the same. The curls were acting weird. They were going different directions. Just understand that every time you're straightening your hair, you are gambling with your curls. Also, when I'm detangling my hair, I'm very, very gentle. I put the product through, I feel for tangles, I kind of break them up with my fingers gently, and then I start the detangling process. I really like using like a detangling brush. One where the bristles are really, really just flexible and soft, 
and it just makes the tangling super, super easy. I'm personally not tender headed, but if you're watching this video and you are, or you have kids that are tender headed, this is the direction to go. I find that like the flexible brushes just allow you to detangle your hair without really ripping it out. Hear me, hear me out here. Low tension hairstyles. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. I'm not gonna say that I never, ever, ever do a slick back style, but it's been a while. And it's more of like a rare kind of special occasion type situation. So I love my slick back ponytails and my slick back buns. I love them. But I started to notice the very, very back, like towards my nape, that there was like hair missing. There was like a chunk of hair gone. <laughs> I was getting a haircut and I saw that my hair just had like this hole in the middle. That's the exact spot that I'm tightening my ponytails. <laughs> and I have my buns right back here and I have a hole missing. You know, you take it out quickly or you pull it or you're using those like small little elastics and sometimes that kind of snags your hair. And truthfully, the less manipulation, the better. I am a satin scrunchy girly and I use them for everything. I use them for half up, half down. I use them to go to sleep. I use them for ponytails. When I would go to the gym, I would always do like a really tight top knot bun or like a fan bun. And now I just use a satin scrunchie and I do like a low ponytail or like a cute little half up, half down moment. Every night I also use a satin pillowcase and a satin scrunchie. I don't use a bonnet or a satin scarf, which I might have to start implementing as my hair gets longer. But as of right now, I just put my hair into a loose bun with the satin scrunchie on the satin pillowcase and I'm good. It's all about preventing that friction when you sleep, especially like around your edges. If you're having like a cotton pillowcase, when you move, you're having a lot of friction and that can create a lot of breakage. These are my personal beliefs, okay? I've had blonde hair, I've had colored hair, I've had it all. You name it, I've done it. When you lighten your hair, your hair changes. So I know that there's gonna be people and stylists trying to tell me that you can have healthy hair and have it be lightened. I'm not gonna say that you can't, but the structure of your hair has changed, so there has been damage. It just matters on how you can maintain your hair. If you can't keep the maintenance up, you're gonna see some damage. My hair, the way that it feels, compared to how my hair felt when it was blonde, it is completely different. It's smoother. My hair just feels healthier, juicier. The curls, like, they absorb product better. So I'd recommend if you really want your hair to grow and you really want inches, I personally would recommend no bleach, no bleach. This next tip is a little weird, but it's something that I've been doing and it's just practicing letting my hair be. Letting my hair just be and exist and not feeling like it has to be manipulated 24 seven, products and this and that, like washing my hair, letting it air dry and just letting it be letting there be frizz. I just completely have my hair for at least a few hours, if not overnight, nothing in it, natural, completely clean and fresh. And also when I first was doing this, my hair was really, really frizzy. But as I've been taking care of my hair, I let my hair air dry and the curls actually start to clump. So it shows me that the hair still has definition without having product in it because there is curls that are forming because they're healthy curls. I don't know if there's any science behind it, but it's something that I've implemented within the past two years i want to say and i feel like it's definitely made a difference to be honest the real secret is the less that you do the more inches you're gonna have <laughs> keep it healthy keep your scalp clean keep your hair moisturized that's when you're gonna start seeing results so yeah those are all my tips i hope that you guys liked this video and if you did please make sure to give me a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in my next one